Welcome to part three of how you can learn any language. Today, I'm gonna to tell you who you can start and should practice with. Hi, my name is Rochelle DeMeo from Beltair Academy. So obviously, if you're learning French or any language, you know that you, and you probably want to practice so that you can truly be able to use it and feel like you're communicating in a person in a language that you've been learning. But the thing is, who should you be practicing with? Let me tell you who you can start practicing with and how you can find people to practice whatever language that you are learning. So we talked about taking a course, whether you're taking a course online, such as some of the courses that are offered on Beltier Academy, or whether you're taking a course in person, you know that that is really effective in learning a language. And additionally, taking what you've learned and being able to practice is just going to reinforce the learning. So if you're enrolled in a course, you can and should be practicing with other students in that course. So you're learning French at Beltier Academy. Well, you know that you already have access to different students and you really should make it a point to practice in class, but also outside of class. So when you're thinking about these students that you're practicing with, think about possibly getting an accountability partner, somebody that you can text daily or several times a week to say, hey, how are you advancing in French or whatever language you're learning? And then also have that person or several people from course from the class that you're enrolled in that you can text regularly in that language, but also communicate to in that language, whether it's on the phone or in person. So take advantage of being enrolled in the course to find other students that really want to get additional practice outside of like the recommended or the possibly activities that you have to do or assignments that you have to do within the course that involve another student. Think of possibly how outside the classroom you can practice with these students. You might want to start developing a study group people that you could possibly watch a movie with in French or again that language that you're learning to probably do a recipe with or possibly you are attending some kind of activity a festival but you're looking for students that are it doesn't really matter of what their level is compared to yours you're just looking for people other students that are learning that language and that you can practice with and then you really just need to make it a habit to communicate in that language and again there's different ways to communicate you want to have definitely a partner that you are practicing with regularly once or twice a week that you've set up a time that you can practice whether it's you know online through like a zoom or whatever app you want to use or like a skype or whether you're actually meeting in person but you want to have another partner that you're practicing with possibly a study group and any person that's enrolled in your course again regardless of their level you're just trying to reach out and practice as much as you can even if you have to be the one to reach out to them and try to see how you can practice or what that's going to look like do it so that's the first thing is any student taking or learning that language or simply maintain that language you want to be in contact with them and start practicing with them right now the second group of people that you want to start practicing with are natives you want to be in touch with native speakers that can help guide you they may correct you or you're just practicing maybe you're just reinforcing what you learned or they're just giving you some positive affirmation the key is that by having native speakers you're going to improve and you're definitely going to learn more about the language but also about the culture so how do you find these native people to practice with one way is to look up meetup.com and type in any language maybe you're typing german maybe you're typing french maybe you're typing italian spanish it doesn't matter meetup.com try to find different groups around you of native speakers possibly some won't be native but you're going to assist these meetup events to find people that you can practice with. Again, some may be native, some may not. Look at what you have in common with that person, what your stage of life is, things that you can possibly connect on, and then develop a friendship with these people at these meetup groups. Of course, meetup is one website. 
sorry, Meetup is one website, but there are other websites, even on Craigslist, or if you just Google search different groups that you may find. Another thing is if you look at expat groups. So expat groups are like, I'm part of several expat groups as a French that moved to the United States. So you could find expat groups for any language that you're learning and try to find some that are close by. Maybe you're living in Orlando and so you're looking for Germans that live in Orlando and you're just doing an expat group. To find it, sometimes I recommend searching it in the language that you're learning. Meaning instead of typing in English, expat groups in Orlando, you know, for German. Well then actually look up how you would say that in German and type that in your Facebook research. So you're looking for different groups that you can belong to and then start looking at some of their posts, try to see how you can connect with people, offer to possibly go to get a coffee together, to get to know them, but you're really looking to make friendships with native speakers. And it kind of snowballs because when you get to meet one native speaker, they're going to introduce you to other friends that they possibly already have and people that you can also be friends with. So really think a little bit outside the box in terms of like when you're meeting people that you can practice with, even if you might not have the best connection, maybe they can lead you to other people that you connect really well with. So you, the key here is you really want to develop friendships. So you might develop friendships by traveling there or by going to these meetup groups, by finding other people or maybe our neighbors like, hey, somebody down the street actually speaks Chinese. So this is a great way that I should introduce you guys. You guys can practice together. So always be open to how you can make these friendships to truly be able to practice the language. The last recommendation I have is to have different pen pals that speak the language and that you're communicating with in that language. So your instructor, if you're taking a course, just like I do my courses, should provide you with different websites where you can find pen pals that have common interest and that you can start really communicating with. And the thing is, it's not just about the pen pal experience, it's also about the friendships that you can make along the way. Whether you're playing some kind of virtual game or whether you're just, um, you know, kind of exchanging here and there, hoping to meet someday, but you're just kind of communicating, talking about each other's lives and you're practicing. Eventually it may be more than just a correspondence. It may be you're doing a FaceTime or possibly you're visiting them or vice versa, but really think long-term in terms of creating friendships so that in a long lasting way, you can continually practice with those people. I'll give you a quick, quick story just to end, but I used to play this game called Word Feud. It's kind of like a Scrabble online, and that was kind of like my little outlet or whatever, and so I did that for a couple years, and I actually met a few people on there, and I was doing French Scrabble just because I'm French. I could have thought of actually doing it in a different language, right? That's another point I'll bring up in a different video, but... I met this girl who, Alexandra, really sweet girl, and we had kids around the same age, we had similar hobbies, and we just started communicating just through this game that we were playing. So she became my pen pal, so to speak. Ended up meeting with her years ago. We became good friends, we see each other every year, we communicate regularly, and basically we create a friendship based on an app, and it's kind of cool to meet people that you can practice that language with. So, if you remember one thing from this video, it would be two points. Practice with every person that you can practice that language with, whether they're native or not. Create friendship with native speakers and students and other people as well, of course, but people that you can truly practice with the language regularly. I hope that this video will help you to immediately be able to find people that you can practice the language that you are learning and maintaining for a lifetime.